This is a podcast where real doctors discuss fake medical emergencies. That means that unless you own a corn baller, this podcast is not medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Hi, everybody. I'm Jackson Bain. I'm Johnny Kolosinski. You might remember me from such podcasts as Getting Your Rocks Off, a guide to functional cosplay. This is Hi Everybody, a bad medicine podcast. Every week we talk about what Hollywood gets right and wrong about medicine and how the body works. You can find this podcast online at Hi Everybody MD on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or at www.hieverybodymd.com. Or you can call us, text us, give us feedback at 530-DOCTOR. That is 530-362-8672, D-O-C-T-O-R-B. The B stands for Buster, because we are going to talk about Arrested Development. Yeah. uh, First time we're covering Arrested Development so far. Coincidentally, my wife and I just started a rewatch of it. For me, a first watch for her. And so we were two episodes away from this when Jackson said, hey, let's do this one. And it's an early, it's pretty early in its run. And it's when I still really, really liked it. Um, The later seasons haven't been as great, I'm going to say. I don't know if Mm -hmm. you're that far ahead yet, Johnny. Uh, Yeah, well, I've watched it all before. But yeah, Um, the the first few seasons are the magic. The Netflix seasons are less magic. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best video. Speaking of magic and magic kingdoms and Anaheim, California... At the end of March, you will be able to see us as we are doing a panel for WonderCon, uh, where we're going to be covering an episode of Parks and Rec and Bob's Burgers. And we'll have more information on the exact time and date on that as soon as they've confirmed that for us. Yeah, it was a fun uh, time recording it. It's also a reason why we are doing a slightly shorter episode today, because we just finished recording that one not too long ago. Yeah. Um, so with that, let's get into Arrested Development, My Mother, the Car, uh, season one, episode, her, har, har, har. episode eight. Thank you. No problem. Uh, and, and Jackson, why specifically are we covering this? Um, I was trying to find a show that we haven't done before and I suddenly remembered this episode of Arrested Development and it's a funny one. And I, I really do appreciate this episode. Um, there's not a lot of medical stuff, but this also contains a lot of those like iconic scenes from Arrested Development, like Lindsay going to the prison, trying to get her dad's attention through various means. That's where the the salute shirt comes from. Yep. Um, I believe this is also where you learn more about Michael's of not affair, but I guess kind of infatuation uh, with Job's girlfriend. You learn about Job on a yacht. This is where the Dangerous Cousins episode comes from too. So it's a lot of, if you're an Arrested Development fan, this is like one of those really key episodes. Yeah. This and the one before it are the, are ones where just everything comes from. I, yeah. I didn't realize how much came from those very first episodes. The I've committed some light treason yep. and I've made a huge mistake. Yes. And I don't know what you expected. Yeah. And also, Michael doesn't hate me. He just kind of likes me. I mean, these are mm-hmm. great, great lines. But mm-hmm. this, I think this episode in general really does establish how bad of a mom Lucille is. Mm-hmm. And um, this is why I really like this one. Right. The specific things that we're covering, though, the, the premise of the episode, it's Arrested Development. So the premise of the episode are things happen. Things happen. And they happen to bad right. people. And Michael's trying to be kind of good. Right. And the specific incidents that we're going to be talking about are Michael getting into a car accident with uh with lucille lucille was driving and he was knocked out in the accident so she tried to convince him that he was the one driving yeah and that his amnesia is why he forgot and that he he tried to run over job yeah intentionally so like it all started with just going to a second failed surprise party Mm mm-hmm and I guess Michael, to cheer up Lucille, was going to let her drive the car, even though she got her license taken away twice, I believe. And she had two strikes. And the third she one. She had two strikes. It, the, her license hadn't been taken away, but she wasn't allowed by the family to drive. They also said the second, if she gets a third strike, it'll be vehicular manslaughter, which was also mm-hmm. a very great joke to just toss in there right away. But they let her drive. Then she sees someone who she assumes is Job on a Segway, I believe. Mm hmm. Which, remember when those things are cool? Also, when we see those in downtown San Diego and people are horrible at it and they crash all the time? Yeah. 
Good times. I, 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 I miss the days of being able to see a Segway driven by, driven poorly by tourists in the area. One day, one day it'll happen again. Someday. And when Comic Con, if it happens this year, I'm pretty sure we'll see that too. Yeah, and it will be hilarious. But Lucille tries to hit him, and then somehow Michael ends up in the driver's seat. Right. Yeah. And he's trying to piece together the accident. Mm -hmm. His belief, and we see him coming to in Lucille's apartment with their family doctor there, and his he's his head is wrapped in gauze. Yeah. And even before that, um, he was in the driver's seat. Airbags didn't go off, but I'm assuming it's an older car, but it's not that mm -hmm. old car. That's a car that should have airbags. No, it's a pretty old car because it's the car that he spilled ice cream in and things growing oh, up. Okay. So it's a car from the from the the eighties. Fair enough. But did you hear the explanation why Lucille was okay or how she said she was okay? She was thrown from she was thrown clear. Yes, she was thrown clear. So if that was the case, and this is not bad medicine as more than um bad alibis, I guess. Um, <laughs> you would expect the windshield to be shattered, right? And her to be a bloody mess. Mm -hmm. But also you would expect Michael to be a bloody mess as well, considering how bad that car accident was. And usually if you have a patient that is unable to self-extricate from the car, that automatically makes the ambulance strongly push you to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Mainly because if you can't get out of the car, it could be a number of reasons. Like one, it could be so high impact that you can't physically open the door. Two, you got knocked out so or you got knocked out or knocked so silly you can't get out of the car. Or three, you sustained injuries elsewhere on your body that were so hard that you can't get out of the car. So mm -hmm. all of that together, he probably wouldn't have ended up on the couch of his mom's condo, I'm guessing, and being evaluated by a home doctor with a lot of gauze. Mm -hmm. So that part's a little weird. But it kind of fits with the alibi, but it doesn't fit with real life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And his explanation for the memory loss was that he smacked his forehead on the steering wheel. Yes. But someone said that he hit the back of his head. Right. Now, would a hard impact in the front of the head necessarily result in that kind of amnesia? Well, number one, is this kind of amnesia, short term amnesia from an accident? Is that, was it re realistically depicted? I mean, you can. It depends where how hard you hit your head. Um, mm -hmm. You can potentially get retrograde amnesia, which is just forgetting what just happened. Anterograde is forgetting things that happened after the injury for a little bit. Anterior grade is, is not being able to form new memories for a while. For a little bit, yeah. It's 51st date syndrome for a while. I was going to say memento. That one works too. Both of them equally... Equally enjoyable movies. Um, also Midsummer, but that's that's another story. <laughs> but that that is potentially factual. However, I don't know if you ever cut open a steering wheel before. They're meant they're they're hollow, so mm -hmm. it's really hard to take that head big of an impact on the steering wheel. Um, maybe in the center column part you can, mm -hmm. but you have to be like so far away from the steering wheel itself to actually bend forward enough to hit the center column part. Like if you just hit the front of it, like. You're not going to get knocked out. It's going to hurt a lot. Most of the time in those injuries where people do get knocked out and they're the driver, they're struck on or they strike the windshield. So usually I think this happened recently where someone got brought in. They said they got knocked out. They were the driver. They found bits of hair stuck in the windshield. So that's how they know they got knocked out. Wow. Yeah. So that's the kind of forces we're talking about. The That's why the club, remember the club for cars mm -hmm. was such a flawed instrument because you can technically just saw the steering wheel in half no problem and take the club off and keep, drive away same thing the d the steering wheel is designed to crumple hmm. yeah I, I guess i've never really really known that that was a crumple zone it is one of the crumple zones in the car the windshield technically crumples too but it crumples because of a forceful impact and then your forehead will make you go night night so not not a good one um but striking the back of your head i mean you have your cerebellum back there it's not as hard of an area as the front of your head because if you think about people can headbutt and whatnot, it's pretty. It's a pretty thick part of your skull. Like the thinnest parts are on the side of your head. Um, the back is eh on thickness. It's it's still thicker than the sides of your head. So technically, a good strike can still cause a concussion, unlike hmm. the crack through. And it's that whole coup contra coup thing that we've talked about before, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's when your your brain sloshes around in the fluid in your head. So really, the impact. It's not the biggest thing. It's the sloshing of your brain in your head or in your skull that can mm -hmm. cause you to get 
that kind of amnesia. But the thing that won't cure it, bandage around the head. Right. Yeah. Now, was there? I guess there wasn't really indication that he had a wound. No. To bandage. It, no, there were no wounds. You know, um, I don't. It's a very common trope, though. Like, if you got your head hit, you need to put something to remind people that you got your head hit. So you should bandage your head. Or else how will we know that you got better in another scene? Yes. Well, he was also pretty dazed, too. And I'm what, and it was from all the quote unquote baby aspirins he got. Yeah. Um, they never explained what they were, but I'm going to say. They yeah, were, they de- they de- deliberately didn't. I'm wondering if they were forget me nows. What are forget me nows? Oh, you don't remember. It's what Job gives to people. Oh, OK. To go on dates. They are forget me nows. Okay. And then Job takes them themselves too. I think it's like, we'll catch it later. Job's like, no, you won't. And then he takes a forget me now and goes to sleep. So light, light, um, light date rape jokes, I guess is what they yeah. did back then. But forget me nows or that's what I think he got for forget me nows. Okay. Also, um, I, I thought it was comical, probably not realistic that every time Michael was about to piece together the night, he got bonked on the head. Right. Yeah, and intentionally. Yes. So in that situation, I assume it's kind of like a the doctor told me not to get pudding in it moment mm-hmm. of you should avoid getting knocked in the head when you're dealing with a with head trauma. Yeah, you should. Um, in theory, it shouldn't cause like life threatening injuries. But the best way to think about it is like, you know, when you get a really bad bruise on your leg. And then um, you keep poking it, but if you get struck there again, it hurts more and it just expands more. It's mm-hmm. the same kind of situation. So if you think of a concussion as a brain bruise and you injure that brain bruised area or that bruised area of the brain, it could potentially spread a little more and cause more issues. Okay. It's the same reason why if you have a concussion in sports, they pull you out is so that you don't get repeated area or the off chance of getting hit in the same exact area and cause more cascade of like inflammatory things and cause long-term damage in your brain okay however the hits that lucille dished out weren't exactly big hits they were just like more like nagging hits you mm-hmm. know? except for when she pulled out that statue i really thought that was going to be the end of michael there <laughs> the i'm watching like oh she's gonna club him real bad and she didn't this is the part of the season where jason reitman is dead jason bateman jason bateman jason reitman is a writer i believe that is true i think you're right that's all right. There's a lot of Jasons in Hollywood. Oh, I can name three only. <laughs> That's all I can name. Schwartzman's the only other one I can think of. But yeah, they all end in man. Jason Blankman. Mm-hmm. That would be all. Oh, and then that also was concurrent with the Buster scene too. Right. If you remember that. Or if you yes. want to recap that. Scene. Yeah, the, the, the Buster scene is a very brief one of Buster is dating his mother's rival and to hide from his mother jumps through a ba- a glass balcony door. Yeah. Like a like a plate glass door and those things are usually pretty thick unless I guess this house was built a long time ago and I thought it was it door. wasn't it wasn't like a sliding porch door though it was like windows within the door itself. Even then like I remembered I lived in my apartment in Long Beach um we had a sliding door window and that thing was still pretty like double paned and that house was mm-hmm. built a while ago and it looked like an 80s drug den but it <laughs> pretty heavily pl- heavily pained especially if you're gonna live on the beach you kind of want it like slightly more pain just to prevent or like at least thicker just to prevent like you know the sea air or whatever coming in um when it's cold or whatnot so i would think it would have been weatherproofed a little bit i'm not a builder i don't know this stuff for sure Yeah, th- this is not a uh a, a construction podcast the one thing i can tell you is Buster would be bloody. Mm-hmm. Like really Not bloody. nearly enough blood because there wasn't any. There was zero blood in this. Also, you get hurt pretty bad, but like your at least the way he felt, like hands, shoulders, face, all just torn up more than mm-hmm. anything. And I think this was mentioned on Mythbusters too, where someone dived through a plain glass window to see what happens and they get really, really hurt. It's not just yeah, like they the t- tossed one of their, their ballistic dummies or their crash test dummies through one. Yeah. And like it's not just like a tiny injury, like it's basically going through a shredder, and mm-hmm. you're going to be cut from head to toe. So that part definitely not realistic. All right, here's my head cannon. Uh huh. Lucille too has such bad vertigo that uh-huh. all of her windows have been replaced with safety glass. Even with safety glass, you would get torn up. Because I mean, sugar glass, like in Hollywood. 
Yes. And then during the summer. And luckily, it just never rains. Or or melts. I mean, it gets pretty hot in Newport Beach. It can. Yeah. And there's a lot of... I mean, what, what, was the, what was the thing that the guy who always loses his arm says? And that's this how is you, why you always leave a note? Yeah. That's why you always... Wasn't that like, this is how you get ants, too? Or that was some yep. other... That was another phrase, too. That now, was, the ants is uh, Archer. That's it. I know why I got it confused, because Jessica Walter... Or Jessica Walter is in both. As the same character. As pretty much the same character. But that's how you get ants, too. Is when everything mm-hmm. else, you're going to get ants as well. So That's true. But... I do, I do find it funny how the doctor treated him as well, which was just the same exact gauze around his head, mm-hmm. uh, which, I mean, again, needs more blood. It's yeah. always, that will be my complaint forever, except for, spoiler alert, to, on the WonderCon panel, not enough blood. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's one of the few times I think I've ever complained about not enough blood. Yeah. We, we complained about all sorts of new things that you'll get to hear. Uh, so check it out. End of March. With that, though, I do have an important quick question to ask you for this important but quick episode. The human centipede bills itself as 100% medically accurate. If that's the case, how medically accurate is this episode of Arrested Development, which is called My Mother Car? Or more slowly, the human centipede bills itself as 100% medically accurate. If that's the case, how medically accurate is this episode of Arrested Development? Um, So none of the car accident and all that stuff is realistic at all, I would say. I mean, the portrayal of a concussion is pretty close. I would. The other thing I pro- forgot to mention is he'd probably be throwing up a bunch too, or feeling nauseous because of the concussion. Yeah, just because of the brain swelling and whatnot going on inside of his head. So I'd expect some of some of that to kind of kick in. So, but the the amnesia happens quite a bit. As a guy who's dealt with a lot of concussions in the last two weeks or so, not personally, but with my patients. So I guess with all of this, probably eighty percent. Okay. No, it's lower than the human centipede, which makes me sad because I, again, it's not a knock on the show, I would per mm-hmm. se, but it is definitely a knock on just Michael's head, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Better and, way. And, uh, <laughs> like Ashley was saying, uh, Dr. Ashley Alker a few weeks ago, the medical accuracy is there to serve the script and not the other way around. Exactly. The script is not there to be a vehicle for medical accuracy, just like the car is not there to be a vehicle that Lucille is driving. Exactly. It's really, I think the one thing we always, I think she brought it up best in that episode is that the reason why I think doing this is fun, but also kind of serves a purpose in a way is just we're trying to make sure people get the right information. I think. Mm-hmm. And, you know, concussions are serious, but they're funny. Um, I think a better portrayal of a concussion was that office episode where think about Mm -hmm. how Dwight acted after his car accident. Like he Mm -hmm. stumbled out and was just throwing up on the side of his car and couldn't walk straight and all that stuff. Personality changes may happen, but usually I tell families it's like mood swings more than anything. But this one was just basically groggy Michael Mm -hmm. all the time with uh, repeated head injuries. And then in the office, they even showed, I think they showed injury better in general. Um, with someone falling through the ceiling, though not as much, but again. All Overall, right. Though, good episode. I would I still would watch it just for purely how stupidly funny it is. But it also sets up the rest of the series very well with this one. It's a definitely yeah. like everything ties into each other. And if you didn't watch everything in order, you're gonna not be able to know what, what happened. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, Jackson, uh, for this quick episode. Yep. We'll be back next week with more Hi Everybody, a Bad Medicine podcast. Like I said, keep an eye out for time of our WonderCon panel, which is open to everyone on the internet. Yep. And we'll keep you posted on that. Yep. Look forward right. to it. Thanks, you folks. Bye.